In this video I'm going to look at timers on book pages and specifically I'm going to use multiple timers on a single book page. So the scenario I've got is I've got three different screenshots and I need to explain things on each of those to my users. I could have three separate pages and just have the explanations on each screenshot on a separate page. But that's not particularly interesting because it's basically just a page flipper. So what I want to do, because these three screenshots are all related, they're actually all from the same SAP transaction, I'm going to put them all on one book page, we're going to flip between them and then bring in the, in the information about each of them as we go on. So first thing I want to do is I want to bring in my three images. So I'm going to go to insert image and I want to insert them into my current object because this is probably the only place I'm going to use them. I go to insert file. These are my three screenshots that I want to bring in. So I'm going to select to open those. Now all three of those are brought into this object. Unfortunately, for whatever reason, I can't select them all and then bring them in all at once. I have to do them one at a time. So I'm going to start with the address one. I'm going to bring that in. Then I'm going to insert my next image, which is a defaults. And then I'm going to bring in my third image, which is the parameters. So now I have three separate screenshots on here, um, just to prove that I've got all three. Um, now I've moved them all around. If I want them all to be aligned perfectly with each other, I select the one that's where I want them all to end up and then select the next one and then the third one. And then I can go to left align and top align. Now, because I want the, these screenshots are all effectively the same thing, they're really just these three different tabs on here. I need to make sure they're in exactly the same place and exactly the same size. Otherwise, things aren't gonna line up nicely and it's gonna look weird. But I've now got all three of those in here. I'm just gonna position them in the middle of the screen. Okay, so I only want one of these to be displayed at a time. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to use a object visibility control for them, okay? So I'm going to create an object visibility control. It's going to have three objects in it. And those objects are going to be, and I'll put them in the right order, the address tab. Then the next one is the defaults tab. And then the third one is going to be the parameters tab. Okay. And I'm also going to put these in the same order in here for a very good reason. I'll explain when we get to it later. So now I've got my three images in here and I have... Um, an object visibility, which is basically going to say only show one of these at a time. And when you show it, another one, then hide the other two. Okay, so it saves me having to manually hide them and show them myself. And I'll show you how that works in a second. Now, the thing that I want users to be able to do is to click on these three tabs and it's going to show the relevant screenshot. So I'm going to add um, active areas to the top of this. So I'm going to zoom in a bunch so I can see what I'm doing. And then I'm going to go to here and I'm going to insert an active area, which is this here. Now this is see-through, transparent by default, which is very handy because it makes a great thing that I can overlay on top of my screenshots wherever I want it. And users won't see there's anything there, but they can interact with it. So I'm going to drop this one over the address tab and what I'm going to do is I'm going to go down to actions and say when the user clicks on this I want to out of my three screenshots in my object visibility I want to activate the first screenshot in there okay which is going to be my address tab okay this is the first one that's the second that's the third that I selected earlier okay so now I basically want to have something similar for these other two so all I'm going to do is copy that paste it a couple of times so I've now got one here, which I'll align there. And I've got another one round about there that I'll drop on the top here and extend it a bit. Now I need to set the actions correctly for those. So for this one, I'm going to activate number two. And for this one, I'm going to activate number three. Okay, so far so good. I'm going to zoom out again so we can see what we're doing there. All right, so I'm going to test it at this stage. Always test at every step as you go along to make sure it's working so far. You don't want to get all the way through it and then realize you made an elementary mistake up at the start. So I'm going to go to preview. Now I've got my screenshots here. Initially, it shows, initially, actually, all three of these screenshots are displayed because I haven't yet done anything for this object visibility control. So at the moment, everything is still displayed. And the one that you can see is the address one because that's the one that's listed first here. And this is the order that they're layered in. So address is on top of defaults, which is on top of parameters. So that's why I see that. 
Now I have my active areas on there so the user can come to here, click on defaults and it displays my second screenshot which is defaults. I can click on parameters and it will show that one, go back to address and that all works perfectly. So success with that so far. Now the next thing I want to do is I need to add the information to those particular screenshots. So I'm going to leave them all displayed here at the moment and I'm going to start adding bubbles with information to these. Insert bubble. I'm going to put it to where I want it to go to point to something. Let's say down here. Always give it a sensible name. So this one is pointing to the function field. So I'm going to call it function bubble. And then I'm going to enter some, enter some text in here. And then I'm going to just add a few more screen, uh, bubbles to this as well. Okay, so that's my first screenshot. I've got my three bubbles in there. I'm going to introduce these one at a time. That's what we're going to use the timer for. But for now, I'm just going to select all three of those and I am going to group them. And I'll explain why we're doing that later. I'm going to call that the address group. Okay. Oh, my active areas. I should rename these as well. So I want to call this my address active area. Always give things sensible names. It'll make it much easier later as we'll see. Okay, so that's my first screenshot. I'm now going to basically do the same thing for the next screenshots. Um, I'm just going to hide everything here for now. I'm going to hide all of these bubbles. So again, I'm going to introduce them one at a time. And now I'm going to, for now, I'm going to hide the address image just so I can see the image below it, which is default. And now I'll add the bubbles to that. And then I'll do the parameters one. Okay, so that's the second one done. And then I'm going to do the same thing. I'm going to group those. I'm going to call that group the defaults group. And then I'm going to hide these for now so they don't get in the way. And then I'm going to hide that one so that I can concentrate on this last one. Okay, now we have everything set up the way we want it. I'm going to re-show everything. Okay, so now the fun part. I'm going to get to the um, time controls. So for the first one, I'm going to insert a time control. And I'm going to call this the time control for address. The address tab, okay. There are three things on it. So I'm going to immediately just activate these three sets here. I'm going to give it say half a second before I bring the first one in and then what I'm going to do is if I look down at these I will have my function as the first field that I bring in. So I'm going to bring in the function bubble and then say a couple of seconds later obviously we tweak these depending on how much information is in them but for now that's going to be okay. Then I'm going to bring in my department bubble and then finally I am going to bring in my mobile phone bubble. Okay, so now I have a time control that is going to bring in those three things here, these three here, when I want them to. And we'll trigger that in a minute. So let me just set up time controls for the other two as well.
Okay, so now I have three separate time controls, one for each of those pages. Now I need to trigger them. So I'm going to start with the first one, uh, which is my address time control. I want that to be triggered when I click on my address active area. So I go to address active area and then go down to the actions. I already have the activate of the, the first screenshot. So what I can do in there now is address con time control start. I'll go to the defaults one and when they click on that, I want to say defaults time control, start that. And this is why I like to be um, consistent with the names. The defaults active area will display the default screenshot and it will do the defaults time control. And then finally, the parameters one, again, I want to set that up to trigger the parameters time control. So now all three of those time controls are triggered. Now, this is something that most users or authors forget to start with, is that you've got to have something to trigger that time control. Okay, quite often you'll just have one time control for the page and you'll trigger that, trigger that when the page is loaded. But like we're seeing here, you can have multiple timers triggered by different things. Now I'm going to save that and I'm going to test it, always test as you go along and we'll check that it's working okay. It's still not perfect, there's another few things we need to do, but let's see how that's going. So I'm going to preview and if I click on defaults, it displays that and then it starts bringing my things because my timer's going. Okay, if I now click on parameters, notice they're still all displayed. If I click on the parameters one, which I can't actually get to, let me go back to address. Once I do that, it does start that address time and brings in those other ones, but I've still got everything else displayed. So there's a few things I need to do to tidy up that, but so far you can see that the timers are working. Now, um, the problem is that the user can quickly flip between any of these that they want. If they start one and then they flip to another tab before the time has finished on one, it's still going to display the bubbles for that screen and it's still going to leave them displayed. So I want it to clean up every time you do that. Now I could, for example, on the on click for parameters, I could add into there, stop any other timers that are running and hide all of the other bubbles and then do the same thing on all three of those. But there is an easier way of doing this. What I'm going to do is I'm going to go to the images the screenshots themselves. So I'm going to go to the address tab, okay, and down under actions, there's a few interesting ones here. There's on show and on hide. Now I'm going to use the on hide one, and I'm going to say that when this screenshot is hidden, what I want you to do is I want you to stop the time control for this particular page, and all of the bubbles, I want you to hide the group objects, not hide the group, hide the group objects. Okay, so that's going to hide all of my explanation bubbles. And I want to do the same thing for my other screenshot. So on the defaults one, on hide, I'm going to say if the defaults um, time control is running, stop it. If it's not running, that's going to do nothing. And then the defaults group, I want you to hide all of the group objects. And finally, I'm going to do the same thing on the parameters one. Okay, so here we have um, this is parameters, so parameters time control, stop that. And then the parameters group, I want to hide the group objects. Okay, so now let's look at what that's doing. I'm saving, previewing. Here's my screenshot. No, nothing is displayed here yet. That's something else we need to fix. Um, but if I go to defaults, it starts that timer, starts displaying stuff. If I go back to address, it hides those, displays this, starts that. Now go to parameters, let it start that, stop, go back to another one. So now it's working perfectly. Each time I select a tab, it stops any previous time control that's running, hides the, the bubbles explaining what's on that field. So that's all good, okay? That will work perfectly. The only thing that's missing is that when they're here, it doesn't automatically start the stuff for the address tab. Now I could, as with all of these, I could have said on the address image, when we've got down here on show, I could say as soon as this is displayed, um, I want you to start the time control. I could have done it on here instead of doing it on the action area. Okay, but that would mean that literally as soon as this screen is displayed, it will start that. And that's not really what I want to happen because I might have some other explanations in here or some other stuff. So I'm actually going to now add a fourth time control. And this is going to be my start everything. 
okay and what I'm going to do is say I don't know a second and a half into this page being displayed I want it to start my address time control okay now this one here I am going to have to trigger that as well and this one I'm going to trigger on the page to say on page loaded I want you to go and start start everything so I want you to start that okay and one last thing that I'm going to add in here just to explain things to users what I'm going to do is I'm going to insert a text box and I'm going to say right here Click on the tabs to see information. Okay, oh, actually, let me design. Let me go into here, alignment, right, just so it's aligned with that. So now users have got some instructions telling them what they need to do. Okay, so it's a little bit more obvious. Okay. And what I tend to do with these, where is it, font size, italic, I tend to put kind of navigation type instructions in italic so they know it's information about what they do here as opposed to something in the application. So now let's try this. I'm going to save again, preview, starts my timer, brings those things in here, they've got the instructions and then I can go to any other tab. Every time I do that, it goes to that page and it starts that stuff there. And if I flip quickly between them, it will always hide the ones that it's on at the moment and go to the other ones. Okay, all well and good. The only other thing I will fix while we're here before I close this out, because it's long enough already, is you can see here that I can't actually click on the parameters tab because this is over the top of it. So what another important thing you need to do is these, should, these active areas should always be on top of everything else so that they are always accessible okay so i'm going to put them all the way one at a time up at the top so i will always be able to do them so that's it so that's all i wanted to show you so we've looked at having a object visibility control in here to control which of my screenshots are done i've got multiple timers that are triggered when the user displays different tabs it brings in different information there and then i've got an another timer that's keyed to the page which is going to start when the page is loaded. So that's another way that you would typically start a timer. And that's it. And this now is a slightly more interesting page, albeit with you know fairly spurious information, that has got a bit of interactivity in there because the user has to click stuff to do things. And it's got some animation where it's bringing in different screenshots and bringing in explanations for them, all of which is just going to make it a bit more engaging to your users. So, hope you enjoyed that. Tune in next time. Thanks for watching.